While becoming the youngest to travel to every country in the world, I discovered so many positive things about each country that are often overlooked. So today I am going to share one positive thing about each country with you. I'm actually going to be launching a new series here on my channel soon that will share with you everything you need to know about the best travel destinations in every country. That's right, every country. So make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications because you won't want to miss it. But for now, buckle up because we are going on a whirlwind adventure in positivity around the world. 197 countries in alphabetical order. Afghanistan. They have these incredibly peaceful and colorful old mosques where they still paint each and every tile by hand to restore them. Albania. Albanians have a cultural tradition called Giro, where the whole neighborhood goes out for sunset walks together to chat about the day. Algeria. It's the largest country in Africa, mostly covered by the Sahara Desert, so naturally, their national animal is the adorable, huge-eared fennec fox. Andorra. Andorra is kind of like this cute baby mountain country between France and Spain, which not a lot of people know about, but it has great skiing. Angola. Angolans love their stews, and when you go, you have to try Moamba de Galina, which is a delicious traditional chicken stew. Antigua and Barbuda. If you love sailing, I have got the place for you. This island nation attracts thousands of sailors each year, and for very good reason. Argentina. There is so much to love here. What could possibly be better than chimichurri, fresh steak, and dancing the tango? Armenia. Remember your parents telling you that babies come from storks? Well, apparently, all of those storks live in Armenia. They're adorable and the Armenians love and care for them. Australia. I don't think I can emphasize enough how they actually have real kangaroos just everywhere. Kind of like how the US has deer, which is just like in the cartoons and totally awesome. Austria. As the birthplace of classical music, Vienna just feels like the most elegant city in the world where you can actually attend fairy tale balls. Azerbaijan. The capital city, Baku, looks like the undiscovered Dubai of Central Asia. Plus, they have amazing pancakes you need to try. Bahamas. They have one of the largest barrier reefs in the world, and also it just might be the most beautiful place in the world to see from space. Bahrain. Dubai may have the palm, but Bahrain has man-made islands in the shape of flower petals. Bangladesh. Now, not only do they have beautiful and wild Bengal tigers that you might see, but you can also visit some of the largest mangrove forests in the world called the Sundarbans. Barbados. So can we just say Rihanna? Rihanna is basically a national treasure of Barbados. I'm actually being serious. She was declared a national hero last year by the prime minister. Belarus. If you like trees, more than 40% of the entire country of Belarus is still forested. Go trees! Belgium. Belgium is just one of those countries that seems to be good at everything. They invented the french fry, which just makes the world a better place. Oh, and my favorite city is Bruges. You have to go. Belize. Belize's Great Blue Hole is the world's most massive sea sinkhole, and it's absolutely gorgeous to fly above and to dive. It's also fun to say. Next! Benin. While some of you might not think of this as a positive, those of you who love snakes will be happy to know that snakes, particularly pythons, are revered in Benin and kept commonly in homes. Bhutan. You may have heard of gross national product, but have you heard of gross national happiness? Bhutan invented this to judge how their government is doing to take care of their people's well-being. Bolivia. To me, one of the best parts of Bolivia was in the breathtaking Amboro National Park. I met a man there who had carved out a tiny piece of land for a guest house and has been living there in blissful solitude for over 30 years. Bosnia and Herzegovina. You've seen those crazy Red Bull cliff diving events, right? 
Yeah, one of their coolest locations for them is the Starry Most Bridge in Mostar. Botswana. They have the highest concentration of elephants in the world. I remember driving past literally hundreds of them everywhere in the national parks. Brazil. Party, party, party. During Carnival, the streets of Salvador become the most epic street party I've ever seen. Brazilians sure know how to throw a crazy Carnival. Brunei. This was the first Asian country to ban shark finning. Finally, no more shark fin soup. Bulgaria. Something that still makes me smile when I think of Bulgaria is when I found these beautiful but just huge rolling fields of sunflowers. Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso, hands down, has the most fun capital city name ever. Ouagadougou. I just love saying it. Burundi. Maybe call it beginner's luck, but Burundi struck gold the first time they ever entered the Olympics in 1996, and it took the gold medal for the men's 5,000 meters. Côte d'Ivoire. Abidjan is a very trendy city, and it's even been called the Paris of West Africa. Cabo Verde. Cabo Verde is an island nation surrounded by beautiful blue water, and it's one of Africa's most stable democratic governments. Cambodia. If you want to feel like Lara Croft, Indiana Jones, or Nathan Drake, you need to come and see Angkor Wat. These temple ruins are 50 times larger than Machu Picchu and are one of my favorite places in the world. Cameroon. Cameroon has it all. Rainforests, deserts, swamps, savannas, beaches, big cities, and wildlife, which is why it's nicknamed Africa in Miniature. They have something for everyone. Canada. It's almost a joke that Canadians are really nice, but it's literally so true. Also, the first place I fell in love with motorcycle riding was in Banff National Park. Such good memories here. Central African Republic. Just one of the reasons why Central African Republic is awesome is because they are home to a unique group of pygmy people, known for their short stature, typically under five feet tall. Chad. Chad is home to some of Africa's most colorful tribes, and according to them, they're the world's best camel racers. Maybe go race them and find out. Chile. Chile is a stargazing and astronomer's paradise because it has such clear skies, little rain, and lack of cities to create light pollution. It also has spectacular hiking. China. Ping pong is China's national sport. Have you seen how intense those matches can get? Colombia. Colombia has this naturally occurring river that turns into the colors of the rainbow and it looks unreal, but it's actually real. Comoros. Comoros is an unexpected cultural melting pot. From Polynesians and Melanesians to Arabs, Africans, and Europeans, this country is incredibly rich in diversity. Republic of the Congo. The Congo is the only place where you can see the bonobo. This species of great ape is considered to be the closest relative to human beings. Costa Rica. Costa Rica has over 30% of its national territory marked for conservation, one of the highest ratios in the world, which makes it beautiful to visit. Croatia. In Croatia, you can feel like you're stepping into the world of Game of Thrones. A lot of the show was filmed there, and the city of Dubrovnik was the location for King's Landing. Cuba. Cuba, on the other hand, is like stepping into a time machine because you can see a lot of beautiful vintage cars rolling around Havana in perfect condition. Cyprus. Legend has it that the Greek goddess of love, Aphrodite, was born in Cyprus. I have so many questions. Next! The Czech Republic. There's a town called Chesky Krumlov in the Czech Republic that is, in my opinion, the most fairy tale town in all of Europe. Democratic Republic of the Congo, home to one of the most epic adventures I have ever been on. The DRC's Mount Nirugongo has the world's largest lava lake, and I was able to sleep on the volcano right beside it. 
Denmark. The Danish have a cultural tradition called Hygge, which is the practice of living in a cozy environment. For example, the warm glow of candlelight is Hygge. Djibouti. Djibouti has a salty lake that is the lowest point in the whole continent of Africa. So one could say that Djibouti is really salty. <laughs> Next. Dominica. This island has really unique volcanic activity and it was also a filming location for Pirates of the Caribbean, in case you are looking for treasure. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dominican Republic. Flying into Santo Domingo, I noticed a crazy number of baseball fields. Turns out Dominicans are baseball fanatics and they're really amazing players as well, with many of them coming to the US. Ecuador. Recently in Ecuador, there was a landmark case in the courts where an indigenous people group was given full control over their territory in the Amazon, which is historic for jungle preservation. Egypt. I think this one is obvious. Egypt has the most well-preserved history in the world, and it's mind-blowing how far back in time you can go. El Salvador. If you're going here, bring your appetite. Papusa is the national dish of El Salvador, and it's a thick tortilla stuffed with cheese and meat, and it's so, so delicious. Equatorial Guinea. Habla Espanol? You might need to be here because this is the only country in Africa that speaks Spanish. Eritrea. The capital city, Asmara, has this one-of-a-kind art deco style and it reminds me of the 1960s in Italy, which was surprisingly cool. Estonia. Estonia is the land of singing people. Every five years in Tallinn, nearly one-sixth of the entire population comes together to have this song festival, which has the largest number of choral singers on stage at the same time. Eswatini, formerly known as Swaziland. Eswatini is the smallest country on the continent of Africa, but it's still filled with so much incredible wildlife in its national parks that it is worth a visit. Ethiopia. One of the most magnificent things in Ethiopia is the rock churches of Lalibela. It's still a mystery how they were able to carve them out of solid rock so quickly and what they were meant to house. Fiji. Usually considered a couple's destination, after traveling here solo, I can confirm it's one of the best places to take yourself on a romantic solo honeymoon. Finland. Wife carrying is a sport in Finland. Husbands pick up their wives and race several hundred meters with their better halves upside down on their backs. And if they win, the prize is their wife's weight in fear. What could go wrong? France. French people truly work to live, not live to work. And you can feel that je ne sais quoi everywhere in the pace of their culture. So if you go, give yourself a few extra days to relax. Gabon. Gabon was described as the land of surfing hippos when a photographer captured hippos playing in the ocean just off the beach in Loango National Park. The Gambia. This place is known as the smiling coast of Africa due to the warm-hearted Gambian people. Georgia. The deepest cave in the world is located in Georgia. It's known as the Everest of the deep, which sounds pretty cool. Germany. Every year, Germany holds Oktoberfest, the biggest beer-loving festival in the world. So if you go, make sure to bring your dirtel or lederhosen. <laughs> Ghana. Ghana is one of Africa's most peaceful nations and it has one of the most up-and-coming, young, creative communities in Accra, which is so exciting. Greece. Ah, the place where democracy was born. We definitely owe a lot of the freedoms we enjoy today to the ancient Greek thinkers. It's amazing to stand amongst history here. Grenada. Grenada is known for being the Spice Isle, which feels fitting not only for their exports, but also for their vibrant culture. Guatemala. Guatemala is still influenced by the rich Mayan culture, and when you visit, you can see the incredibly well-preserved ancient Mayan city of Tikal. 
Guinea. My favorite memory when visiting Guinea was going on a boat trip to some beautiful remote islands off the coast. I met these friendly locals who played some amazing, happy music with the biggest smiles on their faces and we had the best time. Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau has one of the lowest rates of tobacco smoking in the world, so that's a pretty good example to set for the rest of the world. Guyana. Guyana is the only country in South America whose official language is English, so it's easy to travel here and connect with locals. Haiti. Haiti is becoming a poppin' surf destination. There's an awesome organization there called Surf Haiti, which is teaching local kids how to surf, and they also do beach cleanups together. Holy See. Many people are surprised to know that the Holy See is a sovereign country. Vatican City is home to the Sistine Chapel, which has some of the greatest artworks of all time. Honduras. Honduras has a thriving scuba diving culture with beautiful places to dive, and one of the most fun places to get certified is Roatan. Hungary. From scuba to spa, there is a thriving spa culture in Budapest, which is why it is known as the City of Baths. Locals go to relax in beautiful thermal bathhouses to soak their toes and socialize. Iceland. Iceland is a sparsely populated and beautiful country which makes it fantastic for road trips. And pro tip, they have surprisingly delicious gas station hot dogs. India. As a regular yoga practitioner myself, I can appreciate how this practice, which started in India, has benefited the lives of millions of people. Also, they have the best food if you love spices. Indonesia. Raja Ampat has the most healthy reefs and marine life I have ever encountered. Between the crystal clear turquoise waters, red, yellow, orange, and purple coral, plus the 1500 types of fish, this place is an underwater kaleidoscope of color. Iran. Iran's Quiche Island has a women's only beach where both men and technology aren't allowed. It's so unique to meet these women where they have a sanctuary to let their hair down and be themselves. I met so many kind ladies here. Iraq. Iraqi Kurdistan has such a special place in my heart. Some of the most inspiring people I've ever met were from a religious minority group called the Yazidis, who have been able to preserve their unique culture and traditions in spite of being persecuted for their beliefs. Ireland. Irish people are so fun and vibrant. Also, oh boy do they know how to party. Drinking cold beers in an Irish pub during a football match should be on everyone's bucket list. Israel. Talk about an oasis in the desert. Through new irrigation technology and innovation, the Israelis have transformed their barren land in just the last 70 years to a world-leading exporter of fresh produce. Italy. There's just so much to like here. How do I even begin? I've been there at least five times and every time I discover another reason to love it. It's just so diverse. Coastal villages, mountains, pizza, just go there for yourself. Jamaica. I don't know what it is about the water of Jamaica, but they're home to many of the fastest runners who have ever lived, including, of course, the legend Hussein Bolt. Japan. The Japanese are the masters of food culture. There's a 50-50 tie between France and Japan for Michelin star restaurants, but one of the restaurants in France is Japanese, so I think they win. Jordan. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on Earth, so when you visit Jordan, you have to float in the salty water, which is actually impossible to sink in. Kazakhstan. The movie Borat really put Kazakhstan on the map for a lot of Westerners, which the Kazakh people, especially the president, disliked until recently when they embraced it by making their official tourism slogan, very nice, <laughs> Kenya. It's nearly impossible to beat a member of Kenya's Maasai tribe in a jumping contest, since it's a traditional dance they practice since childhood, but it's always worth a try. Kiribati. Kiribati is the first country in the world to ring in the new year. 
Due to their position in the time zones, Kiribati is one of the first inhabited islands to see the sunrise each day. Kosovo. Formed in 2008, Kosovo is the youngest country in Europe and it's where I hosted our first ever Limitless Army meetup there a few months ago. Kuwait. Remember how Chad said that they were the world's best camel racers? Well, apparently, Kuwait likes camel racing as well. They have even started using robotic jockeys instead of humans for the race. I would love to see that competition. Kyrgyzstan. If you've ever wanted to escape to a secluded, mountainous land, Kyrgyzstan is the place for you. It's one of the least populated countries with great views. Laos. Every morning at sunrise in Luang Prabang, devotees line the road leading to the temples to give alms to the monks on their way to prayer. It is such a peaceful process to witness in person. Latvia. Riga, Latvia feels like the Paris of Northern Europe. It has the most adorable old town, Christmas markets, and some of the best boutique shops I've ever seen. Lebanon. As a civilization, Lebanon's history goes back nearly 8,000 years in one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, known as Biblos. Lesotho. Lesotho is another country encircled by South Africa, but you could say this country has its head in the clouds because it has mountainous landscapes and a very high base altitude. Liberia. One of the most inspiring women of all time, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, became the first elected female head of state in Africa when she was president of Liberia. She also won a Nobel Peace Prize. We're actually going to take a brief intermission here at the halfway point because I'm excited to share with you more about my experiences traveling to every country on this list in my upcoming book. If you want a sneak preview, sign up for my weekly newsletter and I'll send you three chapters for free. The link is in the description or you can go to lexilimitless.com slash newsletter. I'll give you a second to go and do that now. All right, done? Now let's jump back into it. Libya. Surprisingly, the most incredible Roman ruins I've ever seen were in Libya. This place is called Leptis Magna, and the first African-born Roman emperor, Lucius Septimus Severus, was born here. Liechtenstein. This mountainous microstate has virtually no national debt, which is impressive, but after all, it is eight times smaller than Los Angeles, and financial services are its main industry. Lithuania. Basketball is the most popular sport in Lithuania, and it's said to be the second religion of the Lithuanian people. Ball really is life. <laughs> Luxembourg. It would make sense that one of the smallest countries has one of the world's lowest crime rates. Luxembourg is a very safe place and there's only two jails in the entire country. Madagascar. Madagascar is home to a place called the Avenue of the Baobabs. The trees are thousands of years old and they are very sacred to the Malagasy people. Can you imagine this being your morning commute? Malawi. If you're feeling the love here, it's because this country is nicknamed the warm heart of Africa because of the friendliness of its people. Malaysia. In Kuala Lumpur, they built inside a limestone cave and filled it with temples and Hindu shrines, which makes for an amazing place to visit. The Maldives. This is a water-based nation. 99% of the 115 square miles that makes up Maldivian territory is water. That means there are a lot of potential dive sites to explore. Mali. From Timbuktu to Janay, Mali has stunning mosques that are made up entirely of mud bricks. And yes, Timbuktu is a real place. Malta. Ahoy there! <laughs> there was once a film set created on the coast of Malta for the live-action recreation of the cartoon Popeye, and since it was so adorable, they decided to keep it permanently for tourists to enjoy. 
The Marshall Islands. The most common greeting in the Marshall Islands is Hakwe, and translates to you are a rainbow, which might be the nicest way to say hello I have ever heard. Mauritania. The sands of the Sahara Desert covered over two-thirds of Mauritania, shrouding it in mystery. Far from civilization, there is a circular structure in the desert that some have speculated is the site of the legendary city of Atlantis. Mauritius. Have you ever heard of an underwater waterfall? Off the coast of Mauritius, you can find just that. There is this optical illusion that looks like an underwater waterfall due to how the sand and silt on the ocean floor runs off in a way that makes it look like it's pouring down a waterfall. Mexico. Imagine Swiss cheese, but make it underground caverns. 66 million years ago, the Yucatan Peninsula was hit by a powerful asteroid impact that created what we see today as cenotes, the most beautiful swimming holes in Mexico, with many still undiscovered. Micronesia. Deep in the South Pacific Ocean, Micronesia is an island paradise that is hands down the most gorgeous country to see from the sky. The shallow atolls create these vibrant turquoise blue rings in the waters that feel like paradise. Moldova, the least visited country in Europe, is certainly worth a visit. In Moldova, you'll discover fine wines and kind-spirited locals around every turn. But let's keep that a secret between us, okay? Monaco. Have you ever imagined being James Bond and playing your hand in the Monte Carlo Casino? Monaco is just the place for it. The country is smaller than Central Park in New York, yet nearly one in three people who live there is a millionaire. So they're doing something right. Mongolia. Hunting with eagles has been a tradition passed down from generation to generation in Mongolia. Recently, fathers have also started passing these traditions down to their daughters for the first time to preserve the legacy. I will be going there to do this. Don't know when, but it will happen. Montenegro. This understated country in the Balkans is home to many natural wonders. If you're looking for an adventure, there's an absolutely spectacular place in Montenegro for river rafting called the Tara River Canyon that I highly recommend. Morocco. One of the most beautiful cities, known as the Blue Pearl of Morocco, is the blue city of Chef Shawan. Even before Instagram, the locals decided to paint the entire Medina and the village different shades of blue. Mozambique. If Mozambique doesn't come to mind when you think of pristine beaches, then you're in for a pleasant surprise. This place is a hotspot for underwater diversity because there's over 1,200 species of fish just off the coast. Myanmar. There is an enchanting place in Myanmar called Bagan, which is known as the Sea of Temples, since it's home to the densest concentration of Buddhist temples, pagodas, stupas, and ruins in the world that you can't miss when you go. Namibia. There are many ethnic groups in Namibia, but the most unique of them all has to be the Himba tribe. They have one of the most unique hairstyles you've ever seen. Their red matted braids are made by mixing animal fat, ash, and ochre. Nauru. This entire island nation is just eight square miles, so it only takes about six hours to walk across the entire country. I've never wanted to be on a cross-country team, but I would do it here. <laughs> Nepal. With eight mountains over 8,000 meters, it is no surprise that Nepal is home to the greatest high-altitude mountain climbers of all time, the Sherpas, whose bodies are specially adapted to high elevations. The Netherlands. The Dutch are known to have a very healthy lifestyle. They eat clean and they ride their bikes everywhere. In fact, in the Netherlands, there are more bicycles than people. New Zealand. If you're as big of a Lord of the Rings fan as I am, you'll be equally excited that the real life Hobbiton is actually located in New Zealand with many filming locations around the country. 
Nicaragua. In the middle of Lake Nicaragua, there is an island called Omotepe, which is home to twin volcanoes. You can take a dip in a volcanic spring on the island, which is filled with the softest water I have ever felt. Niger. During the 1970s, the fossilized remains of a dinosaur was discovered here that had 500 teeth, but supposedly only eight plants. Of course, it was aptly named Nigerosaurus. Nigeria. In case you haven't heard, Nigeria has a thriving film industry. It's nicknamed Nollywood and is giving Hollywood a run for its money for the largest film industry in the world, especially when it comes to quantity, as they produce an average of 50 movies per week. North Korea. Um, well, they're self-sufficient. North Macedonia. Since the Ottoman Turks once ruled this region of the world, North Macedonia has not only Balkan and Mediterranean influences, but Turkish as well. You can experience this most significantly in the food. From gyros to baklava, you can taste it all here. Norway. From September to March, the skies above Norway glow green from Aurora Borealis's magical light. If you're lucky enough to catch a glimpse of the northern lights on a clear night, you'll see the waves of light dancing across the heavens. Oman. Colorful marketplaces called souks stretch for miles in Oman and they sell artisan goods and traditional foods, which is an amazing way to explore Omani culture. Pakistan. While traveling in the Hunza Valley of northern Pakistan, I encountered some of the friendliest locals I have ever met. Better yet, since there are not many tourists in the area, you can soak in the best views of the Karakoram Mountains all by yourself. Palau. Ah, the rock islands of Palau. There's truly no other islands as picturesque as these. There's even a lake filled with jellyfish, a natural phenomenon only found in a few places on Earth. Palestine. Palestinians cooked up the recipe for one of the best desserts ever, kanafe. The dessert is made with spun pastry soaked in a sweet sugar-based syrup. Panama. Have you ever wanted to swim in the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean in the same day? Then look no further than the green cufflinks between North and South America. Also has a little canal, I hear. Papua New Guinea. Nearly 9 million people live in Papua New Guinea and they speak more than 800 languages, which makes it the most linguistically diverse country in the world. Where are my polygots at? <laughs> Paraguay. In the heart of South America lies the largest system of waterfalls in the world, Iguazu Falls, which gracefully shares a border not only with Paraguay, but with Brazil and Argentina as well. Peru. Move over, Incas! Peru is also home to the Nazca Lines, which are mysterious designs that can be seen from the sky, and they have perplexed archaeologists for over a century. The Philippines. One of the oldest tattoo artists in the world, 103-year-old Wang Ad, has performed the ancient art of hand-tapped tattoos since she was 15. She lives in a remote village in the Philippines and is said to be from a tribe of headhunters. Poland. When I was traveling here, I visited the underground Salt Cathedral of Poland. 135 meters or 450 feet underground, you'll see chambers, sculptures, salt chandeliers, and an entire chapel carved from salt rock. The craftsmanship was so impressive. Portugal. There is a secret recipe that has been kept within one Portuguese family here since the 19th century. It's a custard tart called pastéis de nata, and you can try it in Lisbon's Belém district. Let me tell you, it's exquisite. Qatar. This year, in 2022, Qatar will be the first Middle Eastern country to host the FIFA World Cup. Romania. There is a town in Romania called Sapunsa that has become deemed the happiest cemetery on the planet. 
The tombstones are made of hand-painted wood instead of gray rock. They're also carved with personalized stories and whimsical cartoons. Russia. Russia is a massive country with a lot more to it than its government. Of the 140 plus million people who live there, there's nearly 200 ethnic groups, many with their own national territories, and there's roughly 100 languages spoken within Russia's borders. Rwanda. On the last Saturday of every month, there is a community work day where people from all over the country come together to take part in cleaning the streets, helping build schools, cutting grass, etc. And even plastic bags are banned. I think we could all learn a thing or two here. St. Kitts and Nevis. Sugar Mass, also known as the St. Kitts and Nevis National Carnival, is a totally unique celebration on the island which takes place around Christmas and New Year's. It certainly adds a lot more flavor and creativity to your typical Christmas celebrations. St. Lucia. This stunning volcanic island in the Caribbean is the first and only country in the world to be named after a woman and is befitting of its beauty. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Talk about a great place to snorkel. More than 225 species of fish live in the crystal clear waters of St. Vincent. Samoa. Samoans live by the spirit of Fa'a Samoa, the Samoan way. This belief has ancient roots that stem from themes of community and family. For example, it means that everyday life is not about you, it's about us. San Marino. On a beautiful hilltop with a 360 degree view of Italy, you'll find San Marino, one of the oldest republics in the world and also one of the smallest. Sao Tome and Principe. This small island nation off the coast of Africa is home to one of the most whimsical looking mountains on earth. See what I mean? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is the birthplace of Islam and it's home to some of that religion's holiest shrines, such as Mecca. More than two million people make a pilgrimage or Hajj to Mecca every year. Senegal. Have you ever seen a taxi with a tail? Well, in Senegal, an artificial tail made of goat or sheep hair is a common sighting on the back of taxis and it's meant to bring good luck. Serbia. Exciting nightlife can be hard to find, but not in Serbia. Belgrade is considered to have some of the most fun and vibrant nightlife in Europe. So all you party people out there, here you go. The Seychelles. These islands were once a pirate hideout in the Indian Ocean. It is believed that a famous pirate hid a treasure here worth an unimaginable sum and remains undiscovered to this day. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone in West Africa is home to giant African land snails, which are considered a delicacy. And when I say giant, I mean giant. <laughs> Singapore. This country is filled with jaw-dropping waterfalls, but they're actually man-made. From the cloud forest and the gardens by the bay to even the airport, it seems like they want you to go chasing waterfalls. Slovakia. The rolling hills of the Slovakian countryside are scattered with old castle ruins, which are amazing places to explore and imagine the grand days of old. Slovenia. Slovenia is considered one of the most sustainable countries in the world, and its quaint capital, Ljubljana, was also awarded Europe's greenest capital in 2016 by the European Union. Solomon Islands. The Solomon Islands are home to so many beautiful people. They have a dark skin complexion that is typical for the region, but they also have blonde hair and blue eyes, which is absolutely unique. Somalia. There is a fascinating place called the Laskio Caves outside of Hargeisa in Somaliland, which has some of the most well-preserved and earliest known cave drawings. Some date back almost to the dawn of mankind. 
South Africa. South Africa is not only home to some of the most diverse wildlife by land, but it's also home to great white sharks in Gons Bay and adorable little penguins on the beaches as well. South Korea. South Korean art and culture is one of the coolest in the world, in my opinion. Everything from the food to the design is amazing. They are also dominating the film industry with works like Squid Games and Parasite, becoming the first non-English language film to win Best Picture at the Oscars. South Sudan after South Sudan gained independence in 2011, it became the youngest country in the world, and it still holds that title. Spain. Every year in a small town in Spain, there is a festival called La Tomatina, where people throw tomatoes at each other purely for the fun of it. It reminds me of a cafeteria food fight in high school, but with an entire town. <laughs> Sri Lanka. For those of you who love trains, there are incredibly scenic doors-off train rides in Sri Lanka. The train from Kandy to Ella is a beautiful seven-hour ride through lush tea plantations and rolling rice fields with endless mountain views. Sudan. A little known fact about Sudan is that there are actually more ancient pyramids in Sudan than in Egypt. I can't wait to go back there and discover more of them for myself. Suriname. The Surinamese celebrate nearly every holiday and festival in the entire calendar from Holi to Christmas to Eid since they are made up of such a diverse group of people. Sweden. Speaking of holidays, I have never encountered people more enthusiastic about Christmas than the Swedes. Every year for Swedish Christmas, they watch Swedish Donald Duck and eat a huge Yule board with plenty of herring. Switzerland. Switzerland is the birthplace of the Red Cross, which has 97 million volunteers. It was founded in 1863 in Geneva, Switzerland, where its headquarters still remain today. Syria. Syria is home to one of the oldest ongoing civilizations in the world, with a rich artistic and cultural heritage that has managed to continue to this day against all odds. Taiwan. Taiwan has incredible cuisine and street food culture, but my favorite thing is that the Taiwanese invented bubble tea, which if you haven't tried it yet, I think it's pretty awesome. Tajikistan. There is a place called the Wakhan Corridor that separates Tajikistan and Pakistan, and trekking there to see its vast landscapes and beautiful culture is so high on my bucket list. Tanzania. Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania is the highest mountain in Africa and the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. Also, Freddie Mercury was born in Zanzibar, Tanzania. Thailand. There is a tattoo tradition called Sakyant here. To Thai monks, the tattoos are sacred enchantments or amulets that are supposed to give the wearer magical powers of healing, luck, strength, and protection against evil. Timor Leste. This small island nation has one of the highest proportions of women in government anywhere in the world, which is pretty rad. Togo. 39 distinct languages are spoken in Togo, many of them by communities that number fewer than 100,000 members, making it a hidden treasure trove for polygots. Tonga. So many humpback whales call Tonga home. Every year, the whales migrate to the warm waters of Tonga to breed, give birth, and raise their young before returning to the Antarctic. Trinidad and Tobago. The Trinidad and Tobago Carnival celebration is definitely the most fun and vibrant carnival in the Caribbean for all of you party animals looking to celebrate next year. Tunisia. Star Wars in real life? Uh, yes please. Tunisia's otherworldly landscapes and unique structures were the inspiration for Tatooine. Turkey. One of the oldest and largest markets in the world is the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. It is such a colorful place with literally thousands of shops. Turkmenistan. 
There was once some sort of explosive accident in the natural gas-filled desert of Turkmenistan that created an open, massive pit where the gas has been burning indefinitely. As Bob Ross would say, it was a happy accident. Tuvalu. One of the largest areas of land in Tuvalu is actually the runway of the airport, which doubles as a massive playground for all the kids on the island on days where there aren't flights. That should give you an idea of how much land there is on this tiny island country. Uganda deep in the untouched jungle of Bawindi Impenetrable National Park, you trek for hours in search of gorillas and then suddenly approach them, living peacefully and eating up to 40 pounds of leaves and stems per day. Ukraine. Ukraine is home to some of the toughest, most courageous, freedom-loving people the world has ever seen. Slava Ukraini. United Arab Emirates. The Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi is hands down one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. The call to prayer here has to be one of the most enchanting sounds I've heard in my life. United Kingdom. Since London is such a historic hub, the city is home to incredible diversity in its restaurants. If you want a fun challenge, you can go around and get a taste of almost every country in London. United States of America, my beloved home country and the country I will continue to choose to be my forever home. Despite all its flaws, I am always proud to be an American because I have seen here more than anywhere else in the world how people can come here and have the opportunity to become anything they set their minds to if they work hard enough. Uruguay. Uruguay has been leading the world in education for all. The country has nearly 99% literacy rate, which is so impressive. Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is one of the most underrated countries in the world in terms of tourism. Trust me, from the old Islamic architecture to the Silk Road ruins, if you want a once in a lifetime adventure, you have to travel here for yourself. Vanuatu. This country is said to be the spiritual birthplace of modern bungee jumping. Native daredevils here build bamboo towers reaching up 100 feet in the air above the lush rainforest, then dive off with their feet tied only by forest vines. I could totally do that. No biggie. <laughs> Venezuela. Venezuela has such a special place in my heart, not only because of the otherworldly beauty of places like Angel Falls, but also because of the kind and optimistic souls of the people who live there that greeted me with open arms. Vietnam. Vietnam, a country with rich history and traditions, is also one of the cheapest countries to travel through in Asia. Even as a foreigner, I felt very welcomed into the culture on each of my trips here, so I would highly recommend it for budget travelers. Yemen. There is a beautiful rock island oasis of sorts off the coast of Yemen called Socotra, where more than one third of the plant species are endemic and they have dragon trees that bleed. Zambia. One of the largest waterfalls in the world, Victoria Falls, is located in Zambia. When you stand on the edge of the precipice and the water is rushing intensely past you, it feels like you have been swept up into a euphoric cloud of power and mist. Last but not least, Zimbabwe. Protecting the most endangered animals on our planet is very important for our future, and I'm happy to report that wildlife conservation programs in Zimbabwe are successfully dedicated to protecting the natural population of animals such as elephants and rhinos. One of the best parts of our world besides people and nature is wildlife, but wildlife must be protected if we want them to be around for our children's children. 
And wow, we are done. This may be by far the longest video I've ever made on this channel, but I wanted to pour a lot of time and love into it because each and every country on this planet is so special to me. It's important to remember that every place in the world has something to be proud of, and for every bad person in the world, there are even more good people. As I said, I am very excited to share more experiences uh, from traveling to every country in my upcoming book. If you want to see a sneak preview, sign up for my weekly travel newsletter and I'll send you three free chapters. Subscribe and uh, comment I like turtles if you made it this far and until next time, let's push our limits.